Merry Christmas, damn it! This is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. Got a few things to share with you in this latest holiday edition on the Moon Family Sedan Channel, bringing you the most room temperature jams ever to exist on Teutubes. Got a few updates for you, date-wise, in the SECV Ripple case. I've got some comments from Attorney John Deaton, and then there's this story from Cointelegraph uh, on your screen right here from, uh, look, I just said from where, Cointelegraph. <laughs> I'm hitting the eggnog, folks. No, I'm kidding. Uh, FTX paid $12 million retainer to a New York law firm before bankruptcy filing. And as it turns out, uh, Jay Clayton's old law firm is uh, the one that is, uh, is helping FTX here. How about that? <laughs> it, it's like anything associated with Jay Clayton is like, gee. But before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say, all right? I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Uh, and I want to share this also first. This is from XRP, the Standard Productions, which I know most of you are familiar with at this point, but for those of you who may be unaware, XRP, the Standard Productions is a parody account on Twitter, which is basically like the onion, but for the XRP community. And uh, XRP, the Standard Productions tweeted out, it's a Christmas miracle, sharing this screen grab of a tweet from Gary Gensler, which of course is fake, it's a joke. And here's Gary Gensler stating, I was visited by three ghosts last night. Long story short, I'm dropping the XRP lawsuit today. Merry Christmas to all. I'm so sorry, Tiny Tim. <laughs> oh, man. That, now, that would be a Christmas miracle. You could definitely make some sort of movie about that. Um, now, here's a headline from the Crypto Basic. Five key dates to note as SEC v. Ripple case approaches the end. Attorney James K. Filan shared a scheduling update for the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission v. Ripple case in a tweet revealing five crucial dates to note as the case nears its end. The scheduling update comes as both parties requested an extension to file Daubert motions publicly on Tuesday. Yeah, so I'll pause and note, I did already update regarding the Daubert motions. Um, I, th that's not something, despite the extension, that's going to slow down the case in my estimation, because frankly, again, there's no shortage of information for the judge to review here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, even if this is submitted X number of days later, it's not going to matter. Peace continues. Notably today, December 22nd, both parties will file omnibus motions to seal materials relating to motions for summary judgment. The court also expects both parties to file redactions to the materials above simultaneously. Now, meanwhile, the court has set January 4th as the deadline for third parties to request to seal materials related to summary judgment motions. Failure to do so by the set date deadline means these parties have waived the right Filing explains. And on January 9th, 2023, the court expects both parties to file responses to the omnibus motions filed on December 22nd. And per their request on Tuesday, both parties will publicly file Daubert motions to exclude expert testimony on January 23rd. Now, I'd, I'd be very, I would be very curious to know, know what's in those. Because the SEC experts that that we've been able to publicly discuss because we have sufficient information where we could actually have reasonable topics to discuss on this they just look like hacks they look like absolute hacks remember patrick duty <laughs> duty and then uh, dr albert metz he must be fancy and smart because he's a doctor that's the guy that said that uh you know if not for ripple the xrp uh would never would have gone above two cents that that was in his actual 100 page assessment that was funded by uh the sec which means funded by taxpayers Oh, yeah. Money put to good work, let me tell you. Peace continues. Finally, on January 18th, the court expects all parties to file responses to the third-party motions to seal materials related to summary judgment. And so, look, it's, I'm happy to see this may be the very final update in terms of scheduling for this case, so we just have to sit back and wait. Uh, Attorney Filan thinks that no later than March 31st of 2023, we're going to have a final decision from Judge Torres in this case. So, uh I certainly hope so. Attorney Deaton thinks that there's a possibility it could come in March, but uh, he thinks it's also a possibility we could see it later than that, including in April. Um, it, all, all, all speculation on this from the attorney's fair game here. I don't, I don't know how it's going to shake out exactly, but we really may just be a few months away here. So uh, she, a few things could happen here. Outside of settlements, that's one option. But also, in terms of what the judge could do, she could rule in favor of the SEC, could rule in favor of Ripple, or could demand a jury trial. 
So there's several options as far as how this could unfold. And my gosh, I, I hope she just rules in favor of Ripple so we can just get this behind us. Uh, and then there was this from attorney John Deaton. I uh, shared an article about uh, FTX. You know, the FTX case uh, may result in the SEC being one step closer to banning crypto exchanges. Of course, they can't outright ban, but you know, attack. And that was a headline from uh, CryptoNews.net. And so attorney Deaton discussed this very topic and he said, how is it possible that in less than two years, Coinbase is allowed to go public <clears throat> and is also publicly complimented by the crypto czar of the SEC, but now the SEC says the runway is running out. Is that how our financial markets are overseen in the United States today? Whether you hate XRP or Ripple, they are the perfect example of what is wrong with the SEC. In January 2019, Coinbase met and informed the SEC it believed XRP was not a security but would defer to the SEC. The SEC didn't disagree and XRP was listed in February 2019. 20 months later, the SEC said XRP was a security and Coinbase delisted it and then sought an IPO. It was granted by the SEC. Gary Gensler becomes the chair and he refuses to meet with Coinbase or any crypto company until he agrees to meet with SB Fraud and FTX this year. The general counsel of the SEC has resigned because he was so connected to SB Fraud. Boy, does that need investigating. But now Gensler wants to ban cryptos traded on the platform that was praised by people who still work for the SEC. This is insanity. And um, I don't have a ton of information to cover on what Attorney Deaton cited towards the end, but I will mention it. Um, was it... Yeah, here it is. Uh, here's a headline on that very topic from Crypto Potato. SEC General Counsel Dan Berkowitz to step down in January 2023. And so this is a guy who was working for the CFTC, and then I guess it was, as cited in here, I think it was a little over a year ago, uh, he ended up uh, moving on over to the SEC, but he was praising FTX. And so that's what Attorney Deaton was saying. Boy, does that need investigating. And people are looking into it. So I don't have a ton of additional information on that, but I did want to mention it. As soon as we got something, be happy to talk about that again in the future. But isn't that funny how that works? Praising FTX. And then uh, FTX turns out outright Ponzi scheme. And uh, as some people have worded it, Dan Berkowitz is being um, you know, provided as the sacrificial lamb effectively because uh, he's out. And, and um, you know, the way it's being portrayed is as though he's just choosing to leave, move on to other things. But I, I, I don't know. It, look, it's getting investigated. You know how our XRP community is. If there's any dirt on this that's publicly available, our community's probably going to find it. And then there's this from Cointelegraph. FTX paid $12 million retainer to a New York law firm before bankruptcy filing. Oh, that J. Clayton firm. Defunct crypto exchange FTX paid a, a retainer of $12 million to bankruptcy lawyers as security for payment of its fees and expenses amid Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings shows a court filing dated December 21st. Sullivan and Cromwell, a law firm headquartered in New York City, received $12 million from West Realm Shires Services, Inc. on behalf of FTX for legal services. In addition... The filing confirmed that over the past 90 days, since August 26, 2022, FTX paid nearly $3.5 million to Sullivan and Cromwell. Based on the information provided, FTX paid at least $15.5 million to avail and retain the legal services of Sullivan and Cromwell. The filing further revealed that Sullivan and Cromwell currently holds nearly $9 million of the $12 million retainer amount. And so uh, that's from customer funds. That's where that actually came from. They should probably give that back. <laughs> Freaking Sullivan and Cromwell. Um, so I would like to know if when they, they when they put the, the Sullivan and Cromwell on retainer, if they knew that they were heading into Rocky Town. I want to know the specifics. Is, is it unrelated? Is it related? I'm just bringing in the news. Like th this is all stuff that's being investigated. Like if, if, th if there's any sort of malfeasance here, any sort of improprieties is going to be uncovered. So I'm optimistic about that. But for now, it's just something to report on, something to be aware of. Tuck that away in the back of your mind. And we'll circle back around if indeed there is something to this here. But it's isn't it interesting that hap just happens to be Jay Clayton's law firm? Um, or, or could it have been that they didn't know that they were going to go bankrupt and then they were just positioning? They were like pulling a, 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 a you know, what's what's the guy's name? Joe Lubin, you know, the guy, uh, co-founder of Ethereum, also found a consensus. You know, they, they hired the, the firm also to... Uh, I think, to, you know, prevent the uh, SEC from going after them because, you know, Jay Clayton Associated Firm, less likely to get attacked. Was it something like that? 
because you know that uh, Sam Bankman Freed was meeting with Kim Jong Ginsler behind closed doors at the same time. Maybe it was just part of the game. It could just be that. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan. <laughs>